Well, hello. Welcome back for another episode of YouTube exclusive content. YouTube exclusive content. Today on the program, we're going to be watching and reacting to what I think might be the worst movie trailer ever made. You see, I'm something of a magician, inventor, and chocolate maker. So quiet up and listen down. Nope, scratch that, reverse it. No, not that one. That one is terrible, but this one is much, much worse. Like, this trailer is so bad that it actually makes the Wonka trailer seem decent in comparison. Also, early reviews for the Wonka movie are saying that apparently it's actually, like, a pretty good film, which, if that's true, then it will have to go down in history as one of the wildest turnarounds from trailer to film in, like, the history of cinema. Because that Wonka trailer is bad. It's really bad. It's a really bad trailer. I mean, the guy who wrote and directed Wonka wrote and directed Paddington and Paddington 2, and those movies are pretty good, so who knows? We all could be pretty surprised by the quality of Wonka, but uh, I, I am certain that no one will be surprised by the quality of the film that we are about to watch the trailer for, because it is guaranteed to be even worse as a movie than it is as a trailer. Quick content warning before we really dive into the trailer. This is just, it's just... It's just loaded with bigotry and transphobia and and, and misogyny. It's, it's just a very, very hate-filled, bigoted piece of media that we're going to look at. So if, if you don't want to watch that today, then this is maybe not the video for you to watch today. But we're going to be watching the trailer for a movie that is coming out called Lady Ballers that is produced by The Daily Wire. And um, it's slated as a comedy for its genre, but I think a more appropriate genre for the film would be, I don't know, hate crime? Is that is that a genre of film? Just like a, a hate film? Because that's that's what it is, and it's, it's certainly not comedy. Before we go any further, let's stop and take a quick moment here to thank the sponsor for today's video, me! Hey, have you been looking for a limited edition double vinyl for my 2022 album, Beautiful Things? Well, have I got just the thing for you. It's, it's that. It's that thing I just said that you were looking for. Yup, Beautiful Things, the deluxe edition, now available in this limited edition beautiful one-of-a-kind double vinyl 17 original tracks all by yours truly this beautiful gatefold design here that that's got this lovely photo of me and my buddies on it the a and b record is pink with this really cool paint splatter and the c and d record is blue with a similar paint splatter and the cool thing about this paint splatter is it was made individually for every single copy so every single one of these copies of this double vinyl is unique every single one of them has its own individual paint splatter on the actual vinyl themselves so your copy will be a one of a kind it will already be part of a limited edition series of only 250 that exist in the world but yours will be one of one when it comes to the unique paint splatter on your vinyl so that's fun so yeah get yourself a gift for the holiday season or get the Austin Archer fan in your life this really really cool unique awesome limited edition gift okay available at austinarchermusic.bandcamp.com or just by clicking the link in the description of this video um yeah we'll get we'll get that over to you this will make an excellent addition to your vinyl collection um beautiful things the deluxe edition now available as a limited edition double vinyl on my band camp austinarchermusic.bandcamp.com thank you austin archer for sponsoring the video <laughs> okay back to you me 
I had a really, really depressing Spotify wrapped as an artist this year. It really bummed me out. And then I made a video on TikTok about how depressing my Spotify artist wrapped was. And all these people in the comments of that video were like, I didn't even know you did music. And that didn't help things at all. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really fucking hate that we're about to get into it. I really... Oh, I really don't want to watch this trailer again. Watching it once was bad enough, and I I don't want to watch it again. But that's what we're doing. So, so here we go. In a world where women's sports is being transformed. Right off the bat, the whole, like, transformed thing. Like, this is, this is... This is the attempts at humor. Like, this is as good as the joke writing gets in this movie or in this movie trailer. Is they're like, I mean, the word is transformed. That's how the word is spelled. T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M-E-D. But they put the little hyphen in there so that they can make the pun joke of, like, transformed. It's just, and that's, that's about the level of comedic capability that we're dealing with here. That's about as good of a joke, if you can even call it that, as the people who made this film are capable of making. Also, right off the bat, we have a little cameo from Riley Gaines there. You may or may not be aware of Riley Gaines as the right-wing media darling who did a whole media tour after she had to suffer the indignity of competing against Leah Thomas, a trans swimmer uh, in college swimming. Riley Gaines tied with Leah Thomas at the NCAA Women's Swimming Championships for fifth place. They both took fifth, which means that four cisgender women beat both of them in the championships. And it also means that Riley Gaines would have taken fifth whether Leah Thomas was there or not. Essentially, Leah Thomas competing had zero effect on Riley Gaines. It didn't affect where she placed. It didn't change anything for Riley Gaines. But that didn't stop Riley Gaines from going on every single right-wing news show and right-wing podcast that she could to talk about how unfair it was that she had to compete next to a trans woman. Because Riley Gaines, you see, is a massive bigot, and she sucks. And here she is in this god-awful movie trailer because of fucking course she is. The Daily Wire calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year. I, I just, I just, like, it's been said so many times. There have been so many YouTube videos and TikTok videos and just so many commentary pieces on the internet talking about how bad at comedy conservatives are. But God, it, it makes me, what triggers me more than anything, and they love that, like, it's the most triggering comedy of the year, but the thing that triggers me is, is just how painfully unfunny these people are. How, how, I can't, like... I can't fathom how bad they are at comedy. They're so bad at it. And it's just the, just like this this guy's stupid fucking face. His stupid fucking face. It's not the fact that like they're they're being so rude to trans people. Like that's I mean, obviously I don't like that, but that's just sort of par for the course with these people. But it's just that like they think that this is what's funny, is him just making this obnoxious, stupid fucking face while wearing this really bad, obvious fake wig. It's like that terrible Jim Brewer special where he just sort of walks around on stage making dumb faces for 90 minutes and the audience is just going crazy. They're just in stitches over how funny it is that Jim Brewer's like, people who got vaccinated, they look like this. They got vaccinated. <laughs> Vaccinated. What? You need a new booster. What? And that's the joke here at the beginning of this trailer is this obviously cisgender man who's wearing a bad wig making a stupid face that I want to punch. <laughs> Guys, this is serious. Sports can be your pathway to a better life. Well, like yours? <laughs> Please don't steal my catalytic converter again. Winning matters. It's the key ingredient in becoming a winner. Maybe you should try it sometime. All right, so uh, 
I will be honest, I got a little jump scare the first time I watched this, because in the wide, this guy who's playing the coach sort of looked like Mark Hamill, and I got scared that like Mark Hamill took a bag of money to be in this terrible, bigoted, uh, piece of shit movie. I was really glad that it turned out to not be Mark Hamill, and it just turned out to be some nobody actor that I'm going to spend the rest of my life not caring about. But also, did you just catch that like super racist line in there where he tells the black kid on the sports team to not steal his catalytic converter again? Well, like yours? <laughs> Please don't steal my catalytic converter again. Like, hey, benefit of the doubt to the terrible people who made this movie, the team seems to be all white guys and only one black guy, so he could just be talking in general to the team, but the way that they've set it up in the trailer, it does sound like the white coach is asking the one black kid on the team to not steal his catalytic converter again. And also like I'm I don't really feel inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to these filmmakers. I I I would not put it past them at all to just put a joke that is that blatantly racist right at the beginning of their super bigoted trailer for their super bigoted movie. Winning matters. It's the key ingredient in becoming a winner. Maybe you should try it sometime. Are you going to move? I am not. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. So we've got this woman who's obviously the stand-in for the stereotypical triggered liberal snowflake. She's got rainbow stripes down the side of her pants. She's wearing like a trans rights pin. And she asks him if he's going to move. I don't know if he, she's talking about move his car or if he's standing in line for something that she doesn't want him to be standing in line for. He says he won't. And so she tasers him. And this is sort of the commentary on like, ooh, it's the tolerant left. But if you do something that they don't like, they become really violent and... You know, this whole film is just sort of built on right-wing fantasy and myth and lies. Like, even from the start there, where it just shows that giant guy choke slamming the woman who's, like, way smaller than him. And it's like, okay, even in a scenario where a trans woman would be wrestling against a cisgender woman, there would still be a weight class. They still have to wrestle someone in their same weight class. This guy is, like, five or six weight classes above the girl that he's wrestling against. And he's also just a fully cisgender man who is very clearly not taking any kind of hormones to change the physiology of his body in any way, shape, or form. It's just a straight-up cisgender man who's like 6'5", 250 pounds, choke-slamming a girl who's like 5'3", 115 pounds. And that's just not a thing that's ever happened in the real world of women's sports. Let's cut to the chase. I know you're not a woman. Hey, you don't know how he identifies. If you could beat them. What do you know about the US Opens for the Global Games? You want us to compete as women. $5,000 prizes. So this is the thing about right-wing hatred for trans people and queer people in general. Conservatives and radical right-wing people hate all queer people. They dislike all queer people, you know, gay women, gay men, trans men, trans women, non-binary people, bisexual people. But their hatred for queer people is particularly charged and heated when it comes to gay men and trans women. And this is all rooted in misogyny. The idea of a person who was assigned male at birth, either being gay and behaving in an effeminate way, or being trans and choosing to live their life as a woman is so offensive to these people because the idea of, like, a man behaving like a woman uh, is offensive because they view women as second-class citizens, as less than. It's all rooted in their hatred of women. Quick little editor's note here, I just used the phrase choosing to live their life as a woman or chooses to live their life as a woman. That is not because I believe that being trans is a choice, that it's like some sort of lifestyle choice you make. I'm just more referring to trans people who have chosen to begin the process or undertake the process of actually transitioning and living socially as the gender that they uh, feel they are internally versus, you know, trans people who live their life um, publicly as cisgender people, as the gender they were assigned at birth. Uh, I hope that that distinction works and makes sense. And that's all over this trailer too. Like this little montage here of these 
female athletes who can barely throw their shot put balls. And it's like they're just, they have no athletic form. It's just sort of like, uh, girls who don't know how to throw a ball. And then the guy who just, he just with his superior man strength just throws the ball so far that the camera can't even see how far he throws it. He's just got the, the power of the almighty Thor. And it's just so evident how much hatred the makers of this film have in their hearts for women and how they regard women and how much respect they have or lack of respect they have for women's strength and for the athletic prowess of the average woman. This is the way the world is now. My eight-year-old daughter told me all about it. So a guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all. Oh, that's called gender fluid. So I can be a woman on the court and a man in the bedroom. I can't believe it. Nice. You mean when you're sleeping? Yes. God, this fucking movie looks so bad. It's so bad. It, it's going to be so, so bad. Look how hard they're trying to make the five men in this shot seem like they're different people with different personalities and different character traits. But really, if you look at all five of these guys, they're all just very visibly conservative, white, cisgender, straight men. Like, if you saw any of these guys out in public, you could make a pretty educated guess that they had at least attended a Proud Boys meeting at one point in their life. Coach. Alex. We, we could play, play basketball. basketball. We have to get the whole team back together. It's time. We're in. I'm in. I'm in. To play. Lady Baldur's. Man up. You like a girl. That's why I'm with her. <laughs> I like that the trailer for this movie's so bad that they couldn't remove the graphic on the film that says Game 2 Qualifier. So, like, this is obviously footage from some kind of montage in the film where they're playing through, like, a bunch of different games, and there's a little title in the bottom of the screen that tells you where they're at. So it's like, Game 1, you know, Regionals, Game 2 Qualifier, Game 3 Semifinals, and it's going to be taking you through, like, a montage. But they couldn't remove that title for the trailer. Trailer. It's just in the trailer, and it doesn't make any sense contextually in the trailer that just in the middle of this trailer is a little title telling you that we are watching Game 2, the qualifier. That shouldn't be in a movie trailer, but this movie's so bad and made by people who are so bad at filmmaking that they, they, they didn't know how to have that clip in the trailer without having the superimposed title on it as well. Pro Hero. Day one of being a girl athlete. <laughs> I love being a girl. To she Wouldn't be a right-wing transphobic romp if they didn't spend some time making fun of Dylan Mulvaney, right? You see what I mean? This, this movie is, it's just a hate film. It's just for people who hate trans people. None of the men in this film even remotely resemble any trans woman that you've ever seen in reality. These are grotesque, inaccurate caricatures of trans people. I mean, it, it, it's truly disgusting. It's on the same level as watching white people perform minstrelsy. It's that level of exaggeration and cartoonishness and broad brush caricature. It's just fucking awful. We could dominate every woman's sport running. Swimming. Soccer. I said sport, Felix! <laughs> he said sport, and soccer is not a sport. <laughs> God, conservatives suck. At comedy. Like, that's a terrible joke. It's really poorly written, but it's also terribly performed. It's just like the acting in this film just looks atrocious. As an actor, I'm offended. As a person who dabbles in comedy, I'm offended. As a person who has a functioning conscience and heart, I'm deeply offended. It's ladies basketball, boys. Nobody watches. I kind of like that this is one of those conservative self-owns here. They're doing a joke about how nobody watches ladies basketball, and it's sort of like, yeah, that's kind of the leftist talking point whenever we talk to you guys about your frustrations with trans women in sports is like, 
you guys don't give a shit about women's sports. You don't actually care about women's sports. And they're admitting it here in the trailer. Like, you don't actually care about women's sports. You just pretend to care about women's sports when it gives you an opportunity to express your bigotry toward trans women. Like, that's the only time you ever even pretend to give a shit about women's sports. Excuse me. Are these seats open? Never mind. Can you imagine being so pathetic that you see Ted Cruz in a movie trailer and it gets you excited to see that movie? Yeah, so it looks like in the big finale championship game of this film, they're going to be playing against another team comprised entirely of cisgender men who have put no effort whatsoever into transitioning. And to make it kind of racist as well, they're all black guys. Jesus fucking Christ, I forgot that that was in the trailer. I, I don't even remember seeing that the first time around. And I, I mean, I mean, uh, we're just going to watch that one, one more time. We won't watch it any more times after that. Like, what other reason could that possibly be in the movie other than to just be like, yeah, we're just going to do this racist thing. I, I, I'm going to call it right now. This movie has blackface in it. I didn't see any in the trailer, but like, I, I bet somebody does blackface in this movie. That's the biggest I've ever seen on a lady. I don't care. Lady Ballers. Oh my God, Ben Shapiro's in this movie. <laughs> now I have to see it. Can you imagine being that person? Can you imagine that being your reality? That, that the whole trailer you're going, this looks pretty good. And then when you see Ben Shapiro at the end of the trailer, you go, well, now I'm definitely seeing it. Can you imagine if that's who you were? Can you imagine how terrible your life would be if that's who you were? One can even be trans age now, which provides Sheelix with a wonderful opportunity to relive all the experiences that she missed out on in school. <laughs> Streaming exclusively on Daily Wire Plus December 1st. I just, I just, I just hate that this is our reality. I hate that I, and her name's Sheelix. That again, like you just know that the writers, when they came up with that, they really felt like they'd written a good joke. Like, they wrote that and they, they texted it to Jim Brewer and they were like, Jim, is this funny? And Jim Brewer was like, that's gold. That's a really funny joke. And they were like, Jim Brewer says that Sheelix is a good joke. So if, if, if Jim says it's funny, <laughs> then, then we're locked in, baby. Anyway, don't, don't get Daily Wire Plus, obviously. Um... That's the good news. We don't have to get that, and we don't ever have to watch this movie. Uh, but, but my God, what a horrific, horrific thing that they went and made. Honestly, I'm really sorry I showed you that. I'm really sorry I showed you that. I hated watching it the first time I watched it, and I hated it five times as much the second time I watched it. Hey everybody, Editor Austin here, just popping in quick to say uh, I can confirm I hated every clip that I had to watch while I was editing this video even more every time I had to watch it. So um, yeah, just really sorry for this this entire video. Okay, um, patreon.com slash austinarcher if you want to support this channel. That's the end of the video. Uh, hi to all my Patreon patrons. Y'all are the best, and thanks for continuing to support me. I really, really do love and appreciate you so much. My podcast is back up. I, I, I stopped doing the podcast for a while, but we're back. Um, People Pleaser streams live here on my YouTube channel and also uh, goes out as an audio version to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that stuff. Uh, you can get my music at austinarchermusic.bandcamp.com. Pick yourself up one of these exclusive limited edition double vinyls. Um, that's it, you know? That's it. Uh, we'll see you next time. D don't watch Lady Ballers on Daily Wire Plus. 
uh, and I, I, I hope bad things happen to all of the people involved in making that movie. You're all uh, really bad people that uh, I don't like, uh, the, the people involved in making the movie, not the people watching this video, just, just the people involved in making that movie. I don't like you, and I hope you stop making movies and um, just sort of go and live a sad existence somewhere that that the end the end the end of the video now good goodbye everybody goodbye idiotic nonsense feeling like a fountain overflow with no one knowing the difference between wrong and right hey it's editor austin again uh, i forgot to mention that i don't have a mustache anymore so that's kind of a bummer but the good news is you should all be able to tell the difference between me and noah Sampson now so that's good Okay, back to the, back to the credits. Because of people like you.